It's uh, Turboville. I don't know how you, I've been told multiple different ways from people that actually live here how to say it. So if we, if y'all don't know how to say it, I'm not going to know how to say it. Just let y'all know. But today's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. Let's start out with that. Beautiful flowers for the mothers. And uh, looking forward to the message today. Looking forward to celebrating Mother's Day. And um, we'll go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, God. We thank you for the mothers. God, but before we celebrate mothers, let's think about those that have lost their mothers, especially recently. God, I pray that you help their grieving hearts as they think about their mothers and what they mean to them. God, help us to have a great worship service. Help us to worship you in truth and in spirit. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. It's going to be very hard for me to do it, but I've been led by the Holy Spirit to do it. I believe this Bible. From Genesis 1 1, which says, in the beginning, and then in Revelations 22 21, it says, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you all. And then it says, Amen. In between that, in James 14, and James 15 14, excuse me, there's a verse. That if there's anybody in, your, in need, what we're supposed to do. And it says, if any among, is any among, any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. J. Michael needs our prayers this morning. I've asked Thomas if he would come up and look like he, oh, there he is. I've asked Thomas if he would come up and stand in this morning in front of this church for Jay McElveen. I would also like this church, anybody that will and are able, to come up and put your hands on Thomas or somebody that's going with him and Ryan has got a cloth that we're going to give Thomas and make sure that he gets it to Jay. So if anybody would like to come up at this time and put your hands on Thomas, we're going to pray for him and I've asked Tommy to pray. Father, we stand before you as a church this morning because we understand that you are all-knowing and that you are all-powerful. And our hope is obviously in you. We pray because we love and it's our brother and his family. And we long for them to be a part of that once again. Lord, there is no power in the cloth. There is no power in the oil. The power is in you. And we believe. With all our hearts, with the same man who said, love his people, and when we go back to 
Amen. It's got a well on it. Come here. Come down here. They're going to be singing. Come here. They're singing. Shh. Also, the Lord made a song on my heart, and I asked Tommy last night. I believe it was about 8, 8.30. I said, Tommy, will you help me sing this song? And he said he would. Stop. But still, this is that. Put on. Every day I'm reminded of God's love for me. Amen. So if we break, while we sing in the verse, if you know this song, sing along with us. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alex and Tommy. I did get an update, so before we move on from uh, Carrie Ann this morning, um, she said, thank you to everybody for the prayers, the calls, and the texts. The outpouring of love is felt and needed. Um, he had a restful night last night. They're still tapering him off the sedative, uh, slowly but surely, so please keep praying. And she asked at this time while they're taking him uh, off the sedative, if immediate family only uh, shows up at the hospital or goes to the hospital. Uh, I think you all can understand because it's going to be a difficult time as he comes out of sedation. So um, just continue to pray for him. And that's uh, the latest on uh, Jay. So now at this time, I'd like to call Cousin Sydney up to do children's time. All the children, uh, feel free to come forward and sit around and listen to what Sydney has. I know, I'm sorry. You can't do that. Kind of an awkward transition, yeah. What's up, God? Hi. Almost dropped my bed. I appreciate it, buddy. All right. All right, you guys. So today is a special day. <gasps> What's the day? It's Mother's Day. I want to show y'all something that reminds me of my mom. Do y'all know who my mom is? My mom is Miss Donna. You know Miss Donna, don't you? Y'all know who my daddy is? <laughs> Who's my daddy? Uncle Mike is my daddy. Did you know that? Is that? Does that blow your mind? That's why I'm your cousin, Sydney. Anyway, look at this. Y'all know what this is? No. <laughs> it's a rag. It's a rag. All right. This is not just any rag. It's pink like your dress, isn't it? I like it. It's pretty. Now, this isn't just any ordinary rag. This is called, and this might make a light bulb go off in your ears, it's called a cooling rag. Put it around your neck. I got. I put it everywhere. I put it around my neck. I wipe my face with it. Why, why would I need a cooling rag? That's exactly right. People use it when they work. People like to use it in the gym, working out, you know, this is a special rag that takes water in, and it kind of keeps it there, and that way it keeps it nice and cool for me, and it really makes me feel better and helps me keep going, and you know why this makes me think of my mama? My mama kind of does the same thing for me. Uh, she's very pretty. This is very soft, and it's cool, and it makes me feel better. There's some that aren't so soft. And some are a little rough, yeah. This one's very soft, and I like to touch my face with it, especially when it's cool and it helps me keep going. And that's why this made me think of my mama. Your mama makes me feel better, too. And there's a word for that. You know what that word is? She didn't make it for me, but it kind of reminds me of her. She's pretty, she's gritty, and she makes me feel better like this does. There's a word for that. It's called comfort. That's right. It's called comfort. When you're, maybe when you fell down or something scared you, you just want to go to your mama and she hugs you and makes you feel better. That's called comfort. Your dad can do that too. But since it was Mother's Day, we want to warm, warm and protect you. Yeah. You like hugging your dad? I like hugging my dad too. This is Mother's Day. There's no touch like a mama's touch. See how soft it is? See how soft it is? It ain't too nasty. It don't smell too bad. <laughs> you can feel it. See how soft it is? Imagine when it's wet. It's just nice and cool. And it's just a great thing. And mothers are too. The Bible talks about mamas making us feel better. It's in a book called Isaiah. It's in 66, 13. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you. Who's, who's talking here? 
Let me read it again, okay? Y'all listening? Let me see your eyes. Let me see your eyes. You gotta listen. This is what the Bible says. As one whom his mother comforts, we talked about that word, so I will comfort you. Now who's he who's talking about? That's right. So in the same Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right, John Dugan. So in the same way that your mom can make you feel better, God promises to do the same for you. I thought that was a great um little Mother's Day sermon there. Y'all wanna hear some jokes? Yeah. They're really great. They're not Mother's Day jokes, but they're excellent, let me tell you. How do you measure a snake? I see your brain. How do you measure it, not kill it? You measure it by inches because they don't have feet. <laughs> okay, I told you they were excellent today. Okay. What do dentists call their x-rays? They call them toothpicks. <laughs> okay, this one y'all might know. This one's kind of an original classic. What does a nosy peppermint do? What is it? It gets jalapeno business. That's right. See, see, someone knew. Okay, I got one more. I got one more. Okay. This one's this one of these. Oh, why did the bullet lose his job? Because he got fired. Because he got fired. Oh, gosh, yeah. All right, let me see your praying hands. All right, let me see your praying hands. All right. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these kids and what joy they are. I ask like Uncle Mike says to bring them some more. Thank you for our mom. In your name I pray. Amen. Y'all like Rice Krispie Treats? Here you go. I like your strawberries. <laughs> oh, no, here you go. Here you go. You go get two for your brothers, huh? I want to get one for my I know. Your brother's right there. Here you go. Here you go. Good morning. We're going to stand and sing hymn number 500, Trust and Obey. If you will stand and sing with me, please. Try. 
All right, so we have quite a few announcements, and I got a card to read, but I want to start off by saying thank you to Stephanie and Felicia for putting on the uh, mother-daughter tea party yesterday. I heard it was a lot of fun. Um, I was at home swimming in the pool with the boys. Um, You know, life was rough for us, but uh, I heard it was a lot of fun, and uh, there was a lot of stuff happening. A lot of people showed up, so thank you so much to everybody who came. it was Thursday. Felicia goes, what are we doing with this? And I said, I don't know. What are we doing with this? And, uh, and then I think it was Amy text or called or something. I don't know. Just people were asking, and I'm like, I don't know. And uh, Stephanie, uh, Felicia contacted Stephanie, and she stepped up, and Felicia said, we're going to do it. So thank you all. Uh, they're not in here. But thank you for stepping up and doing that, and thank you to all who came. I hope that you all had fun. Um, now today's offering will be received, or the offering we're receiving this morning is for the South Carolina Baptist Ministry, Ministries of the Aging. It's a home for former missionaries, their spouses, pastors, their spouses, evangelists, their spouses. Um, and so any money that's in the offering plate this morning that is not earmarked for a specific area will go towards this. So anything, loose, loose money, loose change, just a check put in there with nothing in the four. It's going to go for the South Carolina Baptist Ministries of Aging. Um, and then May 21st, we're going to have a yard sale. We're still looking for donations. Uh, you can drop your donations off here at the church, and that will be on May 21st. Um, next Sunday, we start the Military Bible Stick offering, and we'll be taking that offering from May 15th through the 29th. And then the 22nd is graduation Sunday. We have uh, got a card to read from uh, Charlie and Ann, and it says, Bless you, with butterflies on it. And it says, Our church family, the Lord works wonders through wonderful people like you. Thank you. And then uh, they write, Words fall short and cannot express how we feel about all you have done for our family. During this most difficult time, you have given us the most wonderful gift of all, love. Thank you for the love you express through your encouraging words, visits, calls, cards, delicious food, beautiful flowers, and especially your prayers. Please continue to remember us in your prayers, Anne, Charlie, Pete, Myra, and family. So um, they wanted to make sure that uh, they said thank you. And if you notice, they were here this morning. But given, uh, you know, the recent loss of her mother, it would be difficult for her to be here. So please continue to pray for them. Um, and I know some of you know what that feels like. And uh, maybe you can speak uh, some, some words of wisdom and, and help her through this difficult time. So we have quite a few prayer requests this morning. Uh, the top of the list is Jay McElveen, of course, and then Woody Floyd. Uh, I guess he's back. He's up and doing good. Um, they Ended up having to take more out during the surgery for Woody than they thought, but uh, he's up and uh, doing well. Paula Floyd, she has an MRI soon this week on her hip or that area, right? Um, So pray for her. Uh, Billy Atkinson, uh, pray for him as he's been diagnosed with cancer. Um, Pray for all the shut-ins and then uh, continue to pray for all the families that have recently lost loved ones and pray for our families, period. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it later uh, as well, but, you know, there's a crisis with men in this country, and so pl- pray for families. Pray that we can get men and young men and boys to step up and do what they're supposed to do, and pray that we can, the men now can teach them. So, uh, but pray for our families, pray for our schools. Um, I mean, there's just a lot to be praying for. Pray for the unborn as if you turn on the TV, abortion seems to be the talk of the town right now. 
um, as that uh, Supreme Court thing was leaked. And uh, I'll just tell you, I have seen some Christians put some things that are not very Christian-like um, when they talk about that subject. So um, our world is now calling uh, evil good and good evil. So uh, we need to pray. We definitely need to pray. Are there any other prayer requests? Danny, when does he start? When does he start chemo? Okay. All right. Okay. Right. All right. So just continue to remember the Godwin family and Danny as he's getting radiation to help with the pain. Any others? All right. At this. What's that? Sorry. All right, at this time, uh, I'd like to ask Deacon uh, Tyler Boatwright to come forward and pray. The altar's open. You can come pray at the altar if you'd like, or you can pray right where you're at um, as Tyler prays over our needs. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord, that we get to come and, and celebrate mothers, Lord, and, and just that special relationship they provide and, and the care they provide and just a, a different temperament. And God, uh, we look back on, on these kids that we have here and, and the mothers that are responsible for just the wondrous year we've had with these kids and the salvations we've had, Lord, and the baptisms, Lord. And I know there's no shortage of correlation and, and confident in that is due to good godly mothers lord who are patient and kind and, and just have that temperament lord that these kids need and just again thank you for them lord and lord we, we trust and obey in you this morning with with all that's going on with jay god and, and we're confident in you and, and your plan for his life god and, and please just be with the, the families they go through this time lord. lord we're in a weird time in this world lord and it doesn't seem to be getting better god but we know it's as things get worse, we draw closer to you. And we have a confidence in you, God, today that uh, you will be returning and, and coming to get us all, Lord, that have confidence and trust in you this morning. And I pray your love would continue to shine throughout this world as, as we go out and share your gospel, Lord, and the news of, of your coming return. Lord, be with Ryan this morning, God, as he presents your message. And Lord, I pray it would draw us closer to you today and that we would apply it to our lives this week. And Use it as we go out and, and try to teach your word, Lord, and share your gospel. And we ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again. I'm going to, um, sorry, turn to 321, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, and we will sing through that praise chorus twice. If you will stand with me, please. Thank you, you may be seated. <laughs>
Thank you. Oh, never know what to do in that space, right? It's awkward. Do I stand up? Do I stand in the pulpit? Do I sit down? You know, I don't know. Just the Catholic in me coming out. Sit down, stand up, kneel down, sit down, stand up. You know, you ever heard the, never mind. All right, so today's Mother's Day, right? Yes. So all the moms probably got nice expensive gifts, right? Or their kids made something for them. Or their kids aggravated them. Because remember, all that's out of love. Because y'all brought them into this world. But I would like to thank every single mother that's in here for choosing life. I think it's important. But I also want to make sure that we know that even if someone did not choose life and they are repentant, we still love them. Even if they're not repentant, we still love them. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for choosing life. So this morning we're going to find ourselves in Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look at the choice that uh, uh, Jochebed, I got a uh, hairball, Um, made in regards to uh, Moses. So this morning we're going to be talking about a mother's choice. Hebrews 11, 23 through 29. Hebrews 11, 23 through 29. And so we know that Amram and Jochebed, Jochebed were Moses' parents, right? I'll sp- hey, I'm not going to spit it out right. Tommy, how do you say that? How would you say that? Jochebed? All right, that's how I'm going to say it. See, I knew Tommy could make it simple for me. Um, Amram and Jochebed were Moses' parents, right? But we're not going to focus on Amram. He was important to the story too, but we're going to focus this morning, as it's Mother's Day, on Jochebed. We know that they feared God. And we're getting ready to see how much they feared God in this passage in the book of Romans. They feared God more than man. And because had Pharaoh found out, so we know that they feared God more than man, because if Pharaoh had found out that they were hiding this boy, which was against his law that he had decreed to throw every child in the Nile River, every male child in the Nile River, everyone in that house would have been killed. They would have all been put to death. So Jochebed is just the embodiment of faith, and Jochebed uh, reminds me of a lot of mothers, reminds me of my mother, and just the strength, the faith, the resilience, and we're going to talk about all that this morning. But if you have, if you're at Hebrews 11, uh, verse 23, we'll start. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. And so you notice the uh, author of Hebrew uh, focused in on that by faith. By faith. Well, that's because faith overcomes fear we see that in this story because what does it say they were not afraid of the king's edict they didn't care what the king said because remember why did the king tell them that they had to throw the male children into the nile because the midwives were lying to them they would show up late pharaoh couldn't keep track he knew something wasn't right he knew there were still being male children born see what pharaoh was trying to do is he was trying to eliminate the, um, the, child, the male children of Israel. There would have been no more um, Hebrew children. It would have ended there. He was trying to wipe them out. And so we see here where Moses was born. In Exodus 2, verse 2, it says, The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for Three months. Now, the word fine means cute, right? All all babies are cute. Some of you may disagree, 
but I, I think all babies are cute. But there was something about Moses. There was just something about Moses when she looked at him that she knew that Moses was from God. She knew that Moses was a divine gift. And she knew that she had to protect that gift. She knew that she had to do whatever it took to keep that child alive. They could have simply followed the king, right? They could have simply went out and threw him in the Nile and kept walking. But she didn't. Because she didn't have any fear because she had faith. She had faith in the Almighty. She had faith in God and she knew that there was a plan. Now, in Acts 7.20, it also talks about how beautiful Moses was in God's sight. But they understood the divine work of God. See, this faith exudes from Moses' mother to Moses. Now, we get it, right? Moses at first was trying to tell God, not anybody but me. But if you look at Moses' life, he lived a life of faith. And when he didn't, he got punished for it, right? But uh, faith exuded from Moses' mother to Moses. Jochebed's decision to follow the faith of her ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, impacted her son, who later led Israel out of Egypt. It's an example for not just mothers, but all parents. Whether biological, adopted, or those called to be spiritual parents, discipling others in the Lord, of the impact that quiet faithfulness can have on the lives of many. Now think about during the time that Moses was born. Women were property. They didn't have a lot of rights. Matter of fact, I don't think they had any rights. But to marry, have kids. And so the fact that this woman not only took charge and kept her son alive, but she also bucked the system. She told a pharaoh, not today, kind sir. I'm sure she didn't call him kind sir either. But see, her quiet faithfulness was felt for generations. And then as we talk about faithfulness, um, um, faithfulness or faith begets obedience. We see that she was obedient to the Lord. Because here's, here's what Pharaoh said. Then Pharaoh, once he found out that the children were not being killed, the male children were not being killed like he had said, that's when he came up with throwing them in the river, which I think I've already said, but I wanted to repeat it. But Exodus 122, then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. See, Pharaoh again knew that they couldn't keep track. But Pharaoh knew that the Egyptians could keep track. They could see what's going on. They could find out who's having kids. And see, if, if they found out that somebody was having a child or a male and they didn't do what he said, the Egyptians were required by law to go into the slave's residence and take that kid and throw him into the Nile or kill him prior to the Nile edict. See, the other thing I love about this story is that the midwives fear God. They feared God so much they were willing to lie to Pharaoh. They were willing to show up to the burst late. So by the time they got there, there was no child. It had already been taken care of. And Pharaoh knew this as the king. And so I want to make sure that we see the strength and the power that women have, mothers have in this story see and this is something that i believe all of us can learn from jochebed but obedience our obedience her obedience was to god not man her obedience was to god not man she knew what she was called to do by simply looking at the baby. Simply looking at the baby. There's something about a mother's intuition, right? Like my wife can hear a candy wrapper being opened downstairs. I can't hear the TV that's right in front of my face. But there's something about a mother and their in, 
tuition. There's something about a mother knowing what is going on and what to do. See, we see this obeying God rather than man once again in Acts 5, 29. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. See, Jochebed chose life over the law. She chose life over the law. Now, this is not a political sermon. This is not an anti-abortion sermon, which abortion is murder. But I do believe that obviously this is still relevant today, given what's going on in our great country. But Jesus tells us that life is more important than the law. In Matthew 12, 11, it says, He said to them, Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more value is a man than a sheep, so it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath? See, Jesus tells us that it's important that we obey God, not man. That it is life over law. See, much like uh, Jochebed, you know, mothers, you guys have imparted faith to your children. Matter of fact, I didn't get the statistics because I wasn't thinking, but a majority of the church attenders now are women are women. The men stay home or the men are doing whatever, but a majority of the church attenders, regular attenders, are women. You know who drags their kids to church? Women. Mothers. And I know there's some of you like that in here this morning, that as you were coming up, it was your mother who brought you to church, even though the home life may have not been so good. See, uh, Jochebed lived a life of faith. She obeyed God and uh, and not man. There was no law that was going to keep God. This is the important thing about all this. Jochebed, Jochebed, that was a base in Pakistan I was at. Jochebed, um, Jochebed is not all powerful, all strong, all knowing, right? We understand that. It was God working through Jochebed. See, God is really the central figure in the story. But it was a woman, it was a mother who allowed herself to be used by God. Because there was no law that was going to keep God from working his plan of salvation for the children of Israel. There was no law that would stop God's plan. Men, do you find it ironic that a woman is once again front and center? I don't. Who are the first ones to see Jesus and share the gospel that he is alive? Women. Women. There's a reason, right? You guys give birth to children. If men gave birth, we'd die out. Yeah, amen. Thank you. I've been there for every one of my wives, and whew, I couldn't handle the pain. So my hat's off to you. See, I wonder how many times Moses told his story to people. I'm sure some of them knew it. Obviously, he told it enough. It's in the Bible, even in the New Testament, not just Exodus. But I wonder how many times Moses told his story to the people. And then I wonder if any of the children of Israel that entered the promised land thought about how a woman choosing her child's life over the law affected generations. It was because of Jochebed and her faith. It was because of Jochebed and her obedience. It was because of Jochebed obeying God and not man that they were getting ready to cross into the promised land. Now we know that Jochebed had huge influence in Moses' life because guess what happened when she put him in the river and sent him down? They went and got her to nurse him. So she was still a part 
of his life. So I want to make sure that we know that it wasn't just put him in the river and we're done. She was the nurse, what do they call them, nursemaid? Is that right? Is that the right terminology? Huh? Wet nurse? Wet nurse. Whatever. Yeah. So that's what she was for Moses. So you know she still had an effect on his life. Matter of fact, her decision still, if you look at it, affects us today. See, through her, we get to see how God used Moses. And then here's what I love about Moses. Is Moses, you see the good and the bad. You get the good and the bad. Moses wandered the desert for 40 years. And if you look at a map of where they wandered, they didn't go very far. They kind of almost just, you know, stayed in a certain area. Kind of like a plane waiting to land. But see, Moses, we get the good and the bad. And we know that Moses didn't get to enter the promised land because he lost faith. And because of, uh, uh, well, he, there was a couple of incidents, but uh, the one was his kid saw him naked. And that was not okay. Well, he was drunk. So there's that. But he didn't get to go into the promised land. But despite anything that Moses wasn't, God always came through for his children. God always came through for his children. See, when I think of mothers, I think of love, strength, resilience, patient, hardworking, and a ton and a host of other things. Now, in today's world, some mothers are mother and father. I had a conversation the other day with someone, and I forgot who it was. If you're sitting in here, I'm sorry, but I don't think you are. But I was talking to them about, they were doing a job, and I, I was telling them how good of a job they did. And you know what he looked at me and said? I'm just doing what my mama taught me. I'm just doing what my mama taught me. She taught him to work hard, have pride in his work, and never leave a job unfinished. See, that's what mothers do. They nurture, they teach. My dad was always out to sea, so my mom had the task of teaching me how to throw a baseball when I wanted to play baseball. Teaching me how to dribble and kick a soccer ball. Now, my dad is a very big influence in my life, but growing up, we didn't get to see a lot of them. So a lot of what you see, a lot of what you hear, a lot of what you get is my mom. So you can blame her. Because I get my temper from her. See, as the generations have passed, we have seen mothers step up to fill shoes they never had to fill in the past. And as I said earlier, there is a crisis with men in our country right now. So on Mother's Day 2022, I want to thank all mothers. Thank you for being the jock bed to your children, to your households, to your families. Thank you for standing in the gap when men, when we fell short. Thank you for working hard to raise young men and women. I know it's not easy. But before we get into the time of invitation, the church does have a small gift. So if you're a mother, grandmother, mother figure, please stand up and be recognized because today is your day. So here's where you're going to get embarrassed. So mothers, stand up. Ah. Yeah. That's a lot of moms. I don't know if I got it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, give them a round of applause. You want to come up? I really didn't have a plan for how we were going to do this. I just knew I was going to do it at this uh, juncture. On the fly. It's the best way to do it, isn't it? Freddie, you know you're going to read it. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Walking around. 
So now, for those mothers that are not here, we need to make sure that we get them their books. So please come see me after church so I can get it to you. Thomas. Happy Mother's Day. And we have books for the shut-ins and those that are not able to be with us today. And those that are down in the nursery. You know, I don't really know how to end a service like this. Mothers are so important and mothers mean so much to us, to our society. As Charlie's card said that I read about the support, I mean, there's not enough words to describe or to talk about our mothers. And maybe your mom was a scoundrel, I don't know, and maybe you had another mother figure that you loved and took care of you or whatever it was. But regardless, every person in here had a strong woman in their life. Every person in here had a strong woman in their life. Except for Robin and Therese. She gave me a dirty look. No, I'm just kidding. Mother Mary, very strong woman. So I think how we're going to end today is just by handing those out and saying thank you, mothers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's not enough we can say. We love you. We're here for you as the body of Christ. We're here for you. It takes a village to raise a child. I remember, man, I had neighbors that could whoop me when I was coming up. And they would, too. Mm, Lay into me. But thank you. And so on that note, Tommy, you mind praying? No Sunday evening worship.